Hello, everyone. He does it every time. He does it every time. He does it. Every... I should just take my headphones off. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Will. I'm here from Subpixel. This is our nine o'clock stream time. And you know what? We're, we're simulating life today. It's a simulated life. It's one of our stream pilots where we play simulation games. Joining me today, can you believe it, is my friend and lover, Ian Gibson. Ian, are you out there? Hey, real question, though. Did you do something to your microphone? Because you're not clipping, even though you've clipped for about three years continuously. Have I done something to my microphone? It's a good distance away from my face. I think there's the answer then. <laughs> um, I was messing with it today because when I went back and watched the stream I did earlier today, that which none of you watched, mm -hmm. um, I noticed that uh, you couldn't really hear me over the gameplay, so I was messing with it and figuring it out. And um, this distance away, and my gain up a little bit, I peek into the red, but it's also, uh, I have to like speak louder. I, I have a tendency to whisper. Uh, That's a lie. That's a hundred percent a lie. No, no, no. I have a tendency to like talk. I don't know what it. I don't know if you ever got this on scan lines edits, but it happens all the time on uh, the uh, server quest edits. Is I'll whisper something to myself, but you'll hear it, but you can barely hear it on the audio, and then I have to crank it up and everything. Anyway, yeah, I think I think that's something we both got to work on is keeping like a continuous volume, even when we are whispering or yelling. Yeah, and you just got to, like, modulate us are good at that. moving back and forth. Yeah. We're pretty um, good at yelling, but whispering, I think we, like, sub we just, like, inadvertently whisper without realizing yeah. it's not going to pick it up too well. Um, nobody in chat. Yes. Okay, so, first things first. Ian, I, I, I bought some very good simulating games. <laughs> And Did I'm you... very excited. I've tested all of them. Oh my uh, god, I see Robot Squad Simulator wait, 2017. No, don't! Okay, I need <laughs> you... I have five of them written down. I need you to give me a number between one and five, and that's the one... I'm not saying we're only um, playing one today, but that's the one we'll start with. Okay, my number is... You said one to five? One to five. My number is uh, Robot Squad Simulator 2017. No. What's your number? No, 100%. That's what it has to be. I'm sorry. Unless you say five, it's not going to be it. <laughs> if three. Helicopter simulator it is. <laughs> Can you just tell me if it was five? It was five. <laughs> oh, God. That was such a good like double I play. Really, I really wanted to play it, too. That's the only one I didn't play because I got to the main screen. I went, I can't. <laughs> And judging by our track record, that's also the one that is secretly an adults-only game. Yes. Okay, this game's very difficult. Also, I just realized I need my Xbox controller. Not for this um, one, though. I need it for a different game. This know, reminds me of... Did you ever hear of Take On Helicopters? Take On Helicopters? No. Uh, you know, you know Arma, right? Mm -hmm. So Arma has helicopters in it. Arma two and three do, and um, they got so good at at the helicopter physics in the Arma games that they made their own helicopter simulator <laughs> called Take On Helicopters. That's pretty. And it's good. just it's pretty funny that they're just like, hey, our physics are so good in this war game that we should just. Well, I hate Parsec. I hate it so much. Why? Is it loud? Like, it's It keeps stealing my cursor like while I am moving it on a different window. Do you get the thing where it takes the whole screen and puts it below your taskbar? No. It does that to me every time. Okay, we're going to play We and Cribs. I've yeah. learned no game lets you fully spell We and Cribs. In. Oh, I can change the map. Oh, no, I can't. Never mind. Okay, let's go to my hangar here. Um, that's a menu. Oh, oh this looks look, like fun. I didn't look around this office before. Ooh, statistics. I like games that do this. Like, that's exit the game, that's statistics. Like, this is your menu. Mm hmm There's a tutorial? Oh, I missed that. Okay. Let's do a mission. 
I made a mistake. What'd you do? I went to... Oh, it happened again. I did it twitch. I went to twitch.tv. Twitch.tv. Yeah. What's wrong with going to twitch.tv? Because it auto plays whatever video they're focused on. Yep. And it it's it's apparently a draft for Fortnite players. Okay, I'm turning this game down for me. Yeah, it's loud, isn't it? Ah! Ah! Okay. Are you okay? No! God. God darn it, Parsec. Are you still there? Yes. I was actively moving my volume slider. And Parsec stole the cursor and put it at max volume, <laughs> which is four times what it should be for my headphones. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> so I was just like, oh. that happens to me sometimes because I keep my window sound at 35. So sometimes it gets accidentally cranked up to 100. And oh, I mean, yeah. on my speakers. An aircraft has crashed. Find and transport the survivors. Fly close this... so that the rescuer can pick up the survivors. Is this game Australian? I think so. You know, the fire. On What's foot? up, dude? Oh, oh, hi. Is he okay? Do you Why need rescuing? He's, he's like shoulder. so concerned about throwing his shoulders back. Okay. What? Uh, like the head wobble. You think I can go and get in that plane? Probably not. You have to try. Can I get out? Oh, I can. Let me fly over to the plane. Okay. R to start my engine. This does not look like a difficult game. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I, this one I practiced a little bit. Because I was like, I know we're going to have a stream. And mm -hmm. I'm going to need... Uh, so, well, I'm going to ask you... Like, This is going to sound like a stupid question, but it's a serious question. Have you flown helicopters before? In real life? Uh, no, I mean like in video games. Yeah, I love flying helicopters. Okay, because I but, feel like this shouldn't be that bad. No, it's not. This game is just really... So I'm using WASD for this. Oh, no. Up in, so W is uplift, S is downlift, and then the arrow oh. keys are this. Yeah, that's, that's kind of weird, because I'm used to, like, WASD is, like, tilt, and then Q and E is, is yaw. And so that, and then that blue shift bar, is up and control is down. That blue bar is me adjusting my up, my lift. Oh, but it sticks. That's nice. Yeah. And then H just, lets uh, me just hover. I'm just used to that being either like space and C or shift and control. Gotcha. Yeah. This Which I think uh, is battlefield controls. Oh, there's a flare. This music's intense. It is intense. Why don't you go faster? Stupid, stupid parsec. <laughs> I'm just like trying to check the stream. Guys, just shooting off flares over here. Ooh boy! Careful now. So if I hit H, it lets me hover. You're a little quiet on stream, by the way. I'm a little quiet? See, that's what I was trying yeah. to figure I don't know why I'm so quiet. Just bump, just bump it up either your system setting for your microphone. I would do that first, and then bump it up in OBS, and then bump it up in voice meter. But yeah. and I'm comparing you to I'm comparing you to me on the stream. So I Oh yeah. I think you're loud. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense. I think you're loud. I'll turn the game down, too, because I don't want the game to be too loud. Okay, baby boy. Uh oh, I just clicked on a very questionable link. Oh, Ian. Can't do that. No, I mean, I'm prob I am probably have a virus now. I think every time you move the mouse on your computer, Parsec steals it. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, every time you move the mouse on your main monitor, Parsec steals it. You were too low to pull rope. To go up. Oh, 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 oh. H. Is he dead? No. Is he dead? Why? 
Oh, oh, I don't want to do that. You know where all the simulator games are now? At least Go all ahead. the flight simulator games? They're on mobile. Ah, I, I, I was... When I was researching stuff, uh, I was using Giant Bomb, and I, I noticed a lot of them are on mobile. Yeah, like, and they're actually not terrible, but they're just, you know, that's where the oh. cheesy gaming market is now. One more injured. Oh, he's over there. Can you crash already? Oh, I'm trying to do well. Oh, look, he's bringing them up. I like this random... Oh. Yeah! Oh, I gotta bring him to the hospital. Oh my goodness, you're not even waiting for him to get pulled up. <laughs> nope. We're going! Look at him. They're just like, daintily touching the rope. Music so intense. I don't get it. How much money do you think they paid for this life for this music? A uh, hundred thousand dollars. No, I know. I'm gonna. Think that. I'm gonna go public domain. Yeah, I'm they gotta go have an in-house composer. You think so? They must. Bum, 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 bum. It's a good radio, though. It is. I really like it. It's very realistic. Oh, no. Okay, enough with the music. <laughs> okay, now turn the engines off right now. Me? Okay. Yeah, just coast in. Wow, that worked. Perfect. I gotta okay, go over before a little we bit. stop playing this game, I need you to. Um, I'm gonna look up the name of this maneuver. It's pretty bonkers. Oh, turn off the engine. Auto rotation. Have you heard of auto rotation before? Is that when you go upside down? No, it's basically, um, if the engine goes out on your helicopter, there is a way to land safely. Oh. And, and basically the idea is that you, you dive towards the ground and you gain enough speed that when you pull up, maybe a couple hundred feet off the ground, the rotors will spin so quickly from the fall that they actually generate just enough lift to slow you down for a land. That's cool. Yeah. I want to see that in a movie. Yeah. And when it does that, it like creates just like a, a little bit of a pillow of air underneath you. Um, which is, do you remember the, the Bin Laden raid? Yeah. You remember how one of the helicopters crashed? Yeah. So similar principle, that helicopter crashed and it's the same reason why you don't see helicopters fly between buildings in a city is because um, basically if the, if the helicopter is above or inside an enclosed space or a semi-enclosed space, like imagine it between buildings, it's essentially creating a cushion of air, of high pressure air underneath it because it's pushing air down. Yeah. And it gets to a point where it can't push as much air down because it has too much high pressure below it and it loses lift. Oh. And, and so for the Bin Laden raid, the reason why it crashed was because when it went to land, they had practiced the maneuver, you know, dozens of times, but they didn't realize from satellite imagery 
that it was not a chain link. When they practiced, it was a chain link fence. But in reality, it was a solid, like, 10, 10, 15 foot fence. So when they went to land in the compound, they all of a sudden hit that issue and dropped, like, 30 feet onto the wall because they didn't realize that it was a solid walled compound that would create that, that cushion of air. Oh, jeez. I was, uh, yeah. speaking of the Bin Laden raid, I was told by a very fairly uh, reliable source that they sniped him from very far away and then raided. I'm pretty sure you've told me that before, and I can't remember if it was a joke or if it was just stupid. No, it's 100% true. I think it was stupid. There's no way they sniped him. But I heard... Because they also, I don't think they had enough, they didn't have good enough intel. And they crashed a helicopter. No, I'm not saying it's what happened, but, like, like, it's a couple steps of, away of, like, hearing that from, like, Obama. Like, if he set you aside and told you, like, hey, don't tell anyone. That's what your source is? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> But oh, okay, all right. Um, I just I don't understand why they would snipe him, and then do such a rapid landing inside the compound. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know much about it. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they couldn't do it accurately. I think it's more just they didn't have target identification. Yeah. True. Um, because the, because that shot that they did on the the snipers, I mean the pirates, in the uh, the oh, incident Somalia. that was then in Captain Phillips, that was that's insane what they did. Did you see that thing about how, like, revealing UFO stuff would hurt national security? Yeah. And people were, like, Reddit... freaking out, but it's just because it would mean the government would have to reveal, like, technologies they've developed. Well, not... no, no, so... No, so... No, that wasn't it. See, the, the article was very misleading. It was basically, like, they did a Freedom of Information Act. I think it was Vice that did it. And the response they got from the government was... Um, the response they got from the government was basically just like an office, a records office. And they're like, we can't release that because it's classified. And if we release classified information, it could jeopardize national security. <laughs> so the, and that was like in the actual letter. So then the, the, the news article was just like, government says they can't talk about UFOs because it would jeopardize national security. Like they just ran with like what was basically just, you know, <laughs> copy line. Which is like, we don't release classified information because we don't know why it's classified and that right. could jeopardize national security. So it was, it was kind of a crap article. But yeah, that UFO stuff, um, have, you been, have you been following that UFO stuff lately? No. Bro, I think it's kind of real. UFOs? Yeah, how are you feeling about UFOs? Oh, I feel like they're UFOs. Yeah, they're still basically... Protected. The whole thing is that these Navy, these pilots have come out, these uh, military pilots have come out and been like, yeah, we've seen several of them. <laughs> and when we see them, we mean we see objects in the sky that are moving in a very weird behavior. And when we go up to them, they take off at high speed and disappear up to like 100,000 feet. And then there's like the video footage that's come out that the military has basically said, yes, that's real footage. It's not doctored. That came from us. And they show these weird objects doing weird things and then disappearing. Weird. And, and then, and then the, the military's never really denied it, but they've never really told the pilots not to say anything. So <laughs> <laughs> there's only like two or three pilots that have come out publicly saying it, but they're like, oh yeah, all you have to do is talk to other military pilots and they'll be like, yeah, we see them all the time. You know? uh, what do you think? Another mission? No, another game. Another game. Okay. Yeah, I think this one's just not, I, I want my simulators to have some good jank to them. Exit game. Okay. Ian. Yeah. I need you to pick a number. Five. Between one and four. No, I want to play Train Simulator London Subway. Guess what I did yesterday? What did you do yesterday? Um, okay, so in one month and three days, I'm going to turn 30. Oh my gosh, you're that old? I am that old. And uh, Maggie and I are planning to celebrate. And so yesterday I bought tickets. To the uk we're going to london and scotland for eight or nine days total in nice March. it's gonna be great it's beautiful there i know i've been i've been to london and scotland but i'm excited to go back i have a cousin my mom has cousins in, that's uh, disgusting 
London. Oh. Oh, I love this already. Do you think you could be a subway operator? Nope. Yeah, it's probably good. This is just the beginning of... Good to see you, sir! Did you like a short briefing? Nope. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen to the song, though. You hear this song? Okay, yeah. ready? Ready. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kick it on it. Here we go. That's me in the spotlight. That's me in the corner. Losing my... You can't hear that? No, I'll say you're is... way off. I am, but it kicked... This is R.E.M. Okay, E, D, Q, Q, oh, and A. I missed this last time. Oh, see, it disappears. Uh, okay. If you want to restart, I could take a screenshot of it. No, it's fine. We'll figure it out. Let's go. 40. Don't hit it. Oh, no. You have to go. First thing you have to do is go faster than 40. Well, look, can I get the first station right? Could you be a, a subway driver? Yeah, I think I could. I don't know. I think just being underground for like eight, nine hours in a row would kill me. <laughs> Somebody needs attention. Grayson, come here. Here, Uber. I'm excited. I'm gonna. Oh, don't hit the train. <laughs> okay, here we go. What was break in Q, Q and A? I thought D is slow down. S. Ooh, what was it? It was A. Oh. Well, why did it switch? Come on! Okay, now, oh. okay, I hit it. Why is your... Door's open. Why is this so, why is this so short? <gasps> why is everybody so lanky? <laughs> Look at them! <laughs> They're just like sliding. Anybody getting in? Oh, I see in the map you missed it. Yeah. Yeah, I missed it. No, close them doors. Get it going, boy. How are you playing this game without a pocket watch in the corner? I don't know. Here we go. I don't know. And hands off the. I'm hand gonna. Check. I'm gonna be hand check. Yeah. <laughs> All these trains. <laughs> um. There's this really crazy like. Oops! Genre fine achievement I just got. Of board games called, I think it's called 18xx, and it's all about building empires of rails. In the 1800s, and they're supposed to be like very complicated games. Do you think we can derail this thing? You've broken the speed limit. Yeah, just go as fast as you can. Damn. I'm going to try to, like, hard break this next uh No, I'd station. blow through it. Blow through it? <laughs> yeah, okay. I think you just want to build speed until you... Uh... Did you listen to the BeastCast uh, Christmas fiasco? Or not yeah. fiasco, but... I... How do you feel about that system they used? I thought it was okay. It was interesting. Yeah. Can I say something controversial here? Controversial? I don't think Austin Walker is a good DM for podcasts. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I think he's just a bit okay, too... Okay, you ready, everybody? Doors here open. Go. Get in, get in, get in, get in, get in. You did get in, get in, get in. Get in, quickly. Just get in. Oh, it didn't actually open up. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Successful turn. Oh. Doors open. Um, <laughs> Doors closed. Or maybe it's because he doesn't edit. Like, did you ever listen to Friends at the Table? I've never listened to it. It's just so... Like, you know how sometimes you play D&D in real life Did you whatever? see that? What was that, Will? Was there a ghost train? <laughs> no, it was a ghost train. I think there was a ghost train. The Look, crap. Um, uh, you ever play D and D in real life, and it feels like it feels like everything takes forever because everybody's talking all the options out and just being like way too talky. Yeah, that's what it's like. 
Like everything has to be over described. There's not a good sense of like, okay, we need like a two sentence crisp description of this scene. Yeah. What do you do? It's just a lot of talking without enough emphasis or action. Doors open. Come on, get in. Doors open. Come on. I, man, I hate that they shift the angle. I get it for breaking reasons. Oh, that guy just ran. Um, There's this train. Let's see if we see another ghost train. Yeah, I get what so you're saying. Yeah. That's what I liked about Mission to Zix. Not that they were playing a game, but mm -hmm. they would work out the whole scene and then re-improv it. Yeah. Like in a even, good recording. But even something like um, Adventure Zone, where they, they, they edit it so that it becomes... Uh, it, it flows a lot better. Yeah. And there are instances where, like, like he has a two-sentence prepared description, and you can tell that he's saying that in a rehearsed manner, and there's music underneath it, and then it mm -hmm. kicks over to the recording, gotcha. as opposed to having him saying it to the players, which could have interruptions or false readings, etc. And what you achieve that way, which I was just thinking about, is when you play D&D and you get home from that night, you remember all like the action stuff and everything. You don't remember discussing everything or like exactly. looking up rules. And it's the same way when you listen to a podcast. If you listen to the discussion, you'll remember it. But if you don't listen to any of that, you're getting the same experience. Exactly. Oh, that's just a dark hole over there. And it's weird because, like, with Friends of the Table, it's, like, three, four-hour episodes. And it just drags and drags and drags. Um, and there's nothing wrong with three or four-hour episodes, but it feels like nothing happened in the episode. So it's 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 very difficult. I, I just I think he's a good DM. I don't think he's a good DM for a, for a podcast. Either that or they've got to edit it down. Which is a shame, because I think they had, like, a good system, a really good storyline, good good How did players, people get on my train? just doesn't go well you know all i'm saying yeah. is that we need to we need to start our own rpg podcast again that nobody's uh, gonna listen to hey listen i got uh i got an improv friend of mine who really wants to play D, &D so yeah me too my my pops my dad got me he got me a a grid hex and square grid but the way it is is it's cardboard it's like laminated cardboard squares, like 16 by 16 inches. And I think there's four or six of them. So it's nicer than the mat that I have. When I bought my TV, I think it was what when I bought my happening? TV. What is happening? What? Did they come off your train? I think so. When I well, bought my TV, it came with this huge piece of like really nice. So it's like the paper cardboard, but it's like structural yeah. in between. Yeah. And it's huge. It's like the size of my TV. And uh, but bigger because I had to go in the box. But I saved it because I just want to draw lines on it and like maybe oh, put tape that. over it so you can just write on it. Yeah, it's ginormous. Well, you could you could do that, but you can buy. Um, they have we have it at work where it's it's like wallpaper rolls of whiteboard material Ooh, basically. Yeah, I should do that. So you could just do that on the cardboard. But yeah, so my point being, I'm prepped, ready to go for D and D. I think my father wants to play D and D. I think, do you think, I've, I've done it before, I'm not sure, what's your opinion on online D&D? &D? It's okay. Uh, it's not the best, but for what it is, it's good. Because we could do you, me, your improv friend, and my father. That's not a bad idea. My father, I think, um, I think a first episode you would want to record in person, though. Oh, I don't. I wasn't thinking recording. I was thinking just for oh, fun. Oh, just for fun. Oh, yeah. Okay. My father, um, he has this like weird obsession with dictation, oh. where he's always like, "Oh, Ooh. what if instead of writing, I dictate?" So he bought a blue Yeti and like the blue, like two hundred dollar art microphone arm stand and all this stuff, yeah. just to just to occasionally dictate to Microsoft Word. <laughs> I get that. Um, but the point being. He's totally prepped to do. I mean, should we do that? We should totally do. That. I think we should. Who would DM? You're. You're. Are you still busy with your DMing? Uh, I have not. Uh, my group. <laughs> my group. We haven't met in like three months. So. Oh. But I have all those books. Like I could run Waterdeep. The heist yeah, one think, would be pretty fun. I think it would be between you and I. Yeah. That's me in the corner. That's me in the spotlight. Can you not hear that? 
Where are you? The music, you hear it? Oh, no, I don't hear it. We're done with this game anyway. It's me in the corner. <laughs> okay, me you know what? We'll do what Ian wants. Bye. What was Star the other Wars Dark Forces? Oh, Ships but... 2017. That one I played a bunch because I wanted to get us to a good point. Um, so, we'll so close out okay, our final options. <gasps> we've got Robot Squad Simulator. Mm -hmm. We've got Ships 2017. And we've got Astronaut Simulator. I think not astronaut simulator. So I think we save do that? robots. I don't want to say save it, but we just did space engineers. So that's true. I think robot and then ships. But that space um, simulator, it it looks really good. Didn't NASA release one? Or am I oh, thinking probably. of? Probably. But this one looks. <gasps> you know how like. Mm -hmm. You know how high res or sorry low res, no high res low texture. Like art stuff is really popular right now. Mm -hmm. Take your that's time. what that's what that astronaut simulator is like, and it looks really cool. I'm thinking of Take on Mars, which is a sequel to Take on Helicopters, which was a spinoff of Arma. <laughs> Isn't nice. that crazy? That's crazy. Um, hey, what robot should I buy? Well, I'll have to uh, buy. Whoa. No, not the, the, oh, it's unavailable though. So in the ship that simulator, one. it starts, uh -huh. you have to buy the ship and repair it before you can do anything. Oh. I'm like, what's the point? Um, but, but for D&D, &D, yeah, I was just saying it would probably have to be one of us that DMs. Yeah. But we could always switch off every now and then. Yeah, wait, I, I bought this. I have oh. played one session of D&D &D with my father, and he seemed to. He seemed to enjoy it because he was he did a lot of acting in college and high school, so he enjoyed right. it. Welcome to your first training mission. Your task is to pass all the obstacles. Oh no, I'll save that for when we play it. Your task is to pass all the obstacles. Okay, you're just saying the same thing. Hi Good Alex. Luck. What's up, Alexander? Did you see how active the Brink Discord is today? We brought oh. that game back. <laughs> I left it. <laughs> Yeah, they're like trying to set up meets and stuff. I think they're playing it right now. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> it's hilarious that we played a bit a big role in bringing that game back. Oh, this is this is like a I have to play a demo of construction simulator where you're just like bulldozing a house. It seems similar to this. Hanging out at home. How's the child? Alive, I hope. <laughs> hope so too. Ooh. Going this way. Got that gripper. What was that noise? Is that like a radio? Game? I think so. It's like the same noise as my pit wall engineer in iRacing. Yeah, really? It is. Okay, Ian. That was your fastest okay, time. That was your fastest lap. Okay, Ian, you're point nine down in sector two. That's not that's not what he sounds like at all. We didn't ask about the wife. Yeah, thanks, Alex. I'll have go you know, I watched fire. most of your stream the other day. I just left it on mute, but it was pretty good. <laughs> your <laughs> That's racing. What I did to your stream like three days ago. <laughs> I listen. I don't care, but your racing was good. I, I just. Uh... I yeah. I so that was the first time that a track has come back around that I've already known. So it was interesting, being like, how much did I retain from learning? It did the look track familiar. That's, I was wondering if it was. Yeah. Um, I, there was 12 people in the race. I started eighth and I finished. Guess where I finished? Third. Close. I finished fourth place. I wow. felt pretty good about it. Yeah. Um, so the question now is just when do I move up to a higher series? But I think I'm going to wait until week oh. 13. Man, just got real. Because you can move the arm up and down? Yeah. This reminds me of, um, did you ever watch that DARPA contest for robots? No, but I've heard about it. Like it, it had like a series of stuff, and it was it was like humanoid robots. So they had to they had to get into a golf cart, drive the golf cart to the end of this like forty. They had to drive it like forty meters, get out of the golf cart, and then like drill something using the, like pick up a drill and then drill something, and then open a door. <laughs> and walk through the doorway 
and then like crawl, like crouch underneath this pipe, like carry a box, crouch underneath this pipe, and then walk out of the room. So it was not horribly complicated, but it was a lot of interesting stuff. And it was, I watched it live. It was just hilarious watching the way that these robots would fail. Like one of them was like the robot is like humanoid. It almost looks like an astronaut. And it walks up to the door and it grabs the handle. <laughs> and then it's hand, wrist and arm stay completely stationary. And then all of a sudden the entire rest of its body just rotates and it falls <laughs> over. <laughs> It was just so good. It was really good. There's still a lot of stupid stuff like that. Like picking up the box and then just slowly falling backwards. And it was a competition, so there was like a bunch of different weird, weird robot designs. This is like the entirety of this game, isn't it? Just doing the same mission over and over again with a bunch of different robots. Yeah, It'd be cool probably. if you had to build your own robots. Uh... Go forward, right? Or can you not go forward anymore? You probably gotta extend your arm. You know what I mean? Oh. See, right. if you played more space engineers, it would have helped. Oh, I think that counts. Where do I have to bring it, though? Oh, over there. This music's way too serious. Yeah. I like your three lightsabers on the back, though. Thank you. Oh, is it just... Oh, is... oh it fell. Oh, I thought it was <laughs> gonna float in midair. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. Oh, classic subpixel. I got two thousand dollars for that. Ooh, that's by. What's up? How much is a submarine? I don't know, but this is my <sighs> new job. Well, did you ever watch the show Junkyard Wars? Junkyard Wars. Of course, I watched the show oh, Junkyard God, Wars. I love that show. What am I, so a maniac? Much. That's. We should do that like, show. It was like British at the beginning, so it was like aluminium. Oh God. I love that show so much. Oh, I got a scanner and a camera now. Wait, are you moving your cursor or am I? Are you moving it right now? Yeah, can you see it? No. It's weird. When I put my cursor over Parsec, it like changes to a different. It's weird. I said that last week and you said, oh, it's probably just you. Well, I mean, it is still just you. <laughs> I can't <laughs> see you. <laughs> Lean the arms and defuse the bomb. <laughs> Excuse me. Lean the claws and defuse bomb. So when was the last time you went to uh, uh, London or UK? Uh, it was 2012. We were there for the royal wedding. <gasps> you were there? What? When was the royal wedding in 2012? May. I was there in July of 2012. Wow. I went to Easter at Westminster Abbey. Oh, that's pretty cool. We went to Westminster Abbey, but not for a service. Just to kind of take a poke and a peek. Um, ooh, I gotta get my alcohol tolerance up if I'm gonna drink a pint. Man, I was there, and uh, my father doesn't really drink at home anymore. Mm -hmm. But when we were there, he like every <laughs> every day he because it was just my father and I. And he was just like every day he was like around noon he'd be like, "All right, time for a pint." <laughs> And then, like, at the end of the day, to be like, all right, let's get two pints and then go to bed. And I was just, like, done every I single like that. day. Oh, God, you scared the crap out of me, woman. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to Maggie like that. I just <laughs> turned and Karen's just standing there in the shadows. What are you saying to me? Uh, <laughs> Is that the what? Oh, the passion fruit. Yeah, it's okay. It's the most flavorful of the La Croix. Wait a minute, I don't mean to interrupt, but why were you at the royal wedding? Oh, we got invited. No, wait, I, this is like either way is funny. Okay, so you either got invited to the royal wedding, which is very, very, that's a good story right there. Or you just decided to go to London at that time because of the royal wedding. <laughs> or it's just coincidental. Look... 
Ian, I glitched it. It's controlling both things right now. Oh, it is? Uh, which one is it? Uh, we did not get invited to the royal wedding. Um, did you no. go for the royal wedding? No, we didn't go it? for it. We just happened to be there. It, my mom oh, bought okay. tickets, and they were super cheap. Uh, so the actual royal wedding, we were in Scotland during. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, but we were there oh. the week of, so everything looked nice. And we went to gotcha. which Easter was the week before the wedding. Mm -hmm. So, like, the Westminster Abbey was all dolled up and looking Ooh. great. So. Yeah. Um, speaking of cheap tickets, we're flying from Newark nonstop British Airways to Heathrow. Guess how much we paid for a round trip tickets. Three hundred sixty dollars. Pretty good. Not that's bad. the same. That's the same price we paid to go to Paris, and the same price we paid to go to Germany. It's kind of weird. They always like settle around that price. You coming to visit me? Uh, no, no. We're gonna drive to Newark, get on a plane, fly as far away from you as possible, and then come back and ignore you and just keep trying straight on home. Found a bomb. I feel like that's cheating. Are you wall hacking? No, it's... You know, it's weird. It looks like the... Uh, prop. Oh, we should play prop hunt on stream. Oh. In Gary's mod? Man. Yeah. We'd have to mark that like NC-17 because people in that. I've always wanted to play Trouble in Terrorist no. Town, and I, and I think I tried to play it once, but it's confusing. But I mean, let's do like me, you, Zach, probably Alexander. Well, we could just... Do a Gary's mod stream. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hey, what are we doing for um February? I, I think I want to do a retro stream uh, as soon as I get all my stuff from JJ Games and as soon as I get all the cables for it, and I just kind of want to go through the different consoles. Okay. I also bought Mario Kart 64 because I didn't have it, and I also bought Mario Tennis because I love that game. Mario Kart 64 is okay. It's really good, man. It's good stuff. I just, like, why can't I, I? I need to buy one of the Mario parties. Uh, what's better, Mario Party 2 or 3? Uh, I really like 2. What's, I can't... But the, thing, the thing I'm struggling with is what's the difference between 2 and 3? Uh, the world. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what Well, other than says. that, I really don't know. I'm surprised. I, I. Not that I didn't peg you for it, but. I, Please don't I, peg me. <laughs> I, as someone who just buys old consoles, I don't really see you as. Well, I I didn't for a long time. I didn't have them growing up because we weren't really allowed to have anything other than PC games. And then I didn't buy them for a long time because I couldn't afford them. But now I'm just like, you know what? I can afford them and I want to play them and I want to play these games. So might as well. I, yeah. I like having a collection and I want to, probably not at our current place, but after we move, when I set up like a proper gaming room and having a it's also like decoration like being able to display my consoles and have that in the stream would be cool um i want to read to you the title of this reddit thread i just found okay you ready mm -hmm. mario party 2 versus mario party 3 open bracket analysis and opinions close bracket perfect uh there's also a very large text here that says there will be spoilers spoilers Mario Party 3 has Waluigi. I mean, that's a winner for me, right? Oh, that's true. You're a big fan of Waluigi. They do say the boards in Mario Party 2 are better. I do like the space one and the western one and Horrorland. We played Horrorland when you were here, remember? Yeah, Horrorland was just a little weird because of the, the, the gimmick, but yeah. it's good. Oh, that's no, why I want it. Trash. I want to have it so that I can play it. Yes, yeah, you know. Because I also yeah. bought JJ Games. I bought three. Three. They had N64 controllers for like $8 each. So I bought three of them. Yeah, I'm all for collecting games. The only point it annoys me is like, like I would never buy Earthbound because it's not worth that much. But even like, like, like you have Mario Kart 64, but it still cost me, I think it cost me like 25 or $30 off Amazon. Yeah. But like it's like, it's, I, it's some, the good games are expensive. Like I have it because I have it. And I, any game I've spent money on is because it's a game I know I like. Yes. Um, but other than that, like, again, I'm not saying I don't like Earthbound. Like, if I played Earthbound and I love it so much, I'll buy a copy. 
But it's that kind of stuff that I just don't think is. It's same with wild guns. Like a copy of yeah, Wild it, Guns goes for like three hundred dollars. I'm like, it's no. not worth. It's a good game, but it's not worth the amount of money to play it originally. Yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you hundred percent. It's more just I always coveted these consoles. I never had them. Now I can afford them and keep them as like I don't want to say collector's items, but they're like. It's like my typewriter, you know. Yeah, I don't I, use it. I have a yeah, I have a couple typewriters. But I like it, you know. But it's like the reason I have a Sony Trinitron and all that stuff is so yeah. I can play them and they look nice. It's the reason I'm never like quite satisfied with emulation. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I got to buy some RGB cables. For uh, the OSSC. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. these new consoles. Working. I want to still want to get all that stuff when I have money someday. It's kind of a... It, you got to play a lot. Oh, but I really want to get a, uh, a uh, why can't I think of what they're called? I want to say PV, PVS. I have a Trinitron. Oh, PVM. Uh, PVM. I want to get a PVM or BVM and a like SCART cable and all that stuff. Yeah, I just, I like, I like what the OSSC does where you can use your current TV and yeah. have it blown up and still look really good. I think with the PVM, it's like. I, I understand the dirty CRT look, but I think there's too much effort and storage and bulk in getting yeah. that CRT look. Granted, I have uh, I have a Trinitron, so I'm like not necessarily in the market. And boy, the yeah, games yeah. look good on that. Yeah. Yeah, we had a Trinitron growing up. It's good stuff. I gotta find where this final bomb is. We had um, our last CRT TV was was HD, which is still bonkers when I think about it. It was like a it's like a 32 inch, it's a 32 inch widescreen CRT. It weighed like 200 pounds and it had HDMI input. And I think it went up to 720p. I don't think it went up to 1080p, but it was a 720p CRT. It was bonkers. That's crazy. Yeah. You bought <sighs> sticky tires for your buggy, nice. You got a buggy, like a real buggy, or are you talking oh, it, about like an RC goes. buggy? He built it himself. It goes. Oh, is it a Volkswagen buggy, no, or is it a off -road. a Miata buggy? Well, I'm just wondering what the base is, what the base car is. Uh, I think he built the whole frame. Mhm. Mm and I think it's the is it the Comanche uh, engine? Oh, from a Jeep. Yeah, Jeep Comanche. Cool. Oh, I'm so glad it didn't. Uh... Sticky tires. So you're going to take it on the road now? Ooh, hey. I got to do work on my Miata. I bought it last Black Friday. I bought a suspension kit, a custom Miata suspension kit, and I still Ooh. haven't put it on. I've just been too lazy. <laughs> nice. But it's like coilovers on all four, like... The, the, that, that's one of the cool things about the Miata is that there's so much support that there's this one of the websites they're selling suspension kits that are I don't want to say custom built but they're custom parted so they're literally like okay we got the shocks from this company because they're perfect for the Miata we couldn't find springs that were good enough so we went to this factory and they make our springs for us so, and then you need this modifier in order to get the shock to work on your car. So we CNC that out of aluminum and provide that in the kit. So it's basically a kit of like 20 different parts that they themselves have researched. Some of them fabricated, some of them sourced, and Weird. they put it together. And then they include like a 10 page instruction sheet on like, okay, here's everything you need to do to get this suspension working properly on your Miata. And it's pretty cool. It takes a lot of the like custom fabrication out of it, but you get like a really nice street slash autocross suspension setup out of it but now i have to do is just install it which i'm lazy i also got a weld there's a, a small rust spot on my frame it's about the size of a quarter the hole and i i need to weld it and seal it before the winter comes <clears throat> i hope it blows up it says photograph the bomb in the pipe yeah Oh my god, a six liter V8? <laughs> Yo, that's dirty. That's dirty, Alex. 
Yeah, you should ride in it. It's crazy. Because most buggies have like small engines because they don't really need a lot of power. But that is dirty. Oh my goodness. Why am I ro slowly going backward? Did you put that parking brake on? I think I can. R. Make photograph. Space. Oh, I thought you were telling me the parking brake. No. Why don't you just, I mean, just take a picture. Oh. You probably got to center it. There. Yeah. Now go to the exit. Now get out of here, you dumb, dirty ape. Whoa, I don't ever talk about Maggie. Well, you gotta, did you see that that list that I discorded you today? Of undesirables? <laughs> it's bad. Yes, I did see that list you sent me, wink wink. There's a lot of stuff. There was one of them that takes place in Maryland, and I looked at it, and three of the guests of honor... Two of them I worked with at ZeniMax Online. Nice. Todd <laughs> Howard. Forgot... No. I forgot that a lot of the people who write lore on Elder Scrolls Online originally wrote for D&D. Like, first edition, 2.5, 3.5 edition. Like, they, they, they helped write the, the, the player's guide and stuff for that. So they're, like, pseudo-celebrities in the RPG business. Next yeah. game. Next ships. game. Ships. Did we finish with ships? Hi, Karen. Ian says hi, Karen. Let's finish it out with ships. Oh, look. It auto-captured it. Man, you know what we still haven't done? What? Played a, a multiplayer submarine game. We should do that. <gasps> Will. Okay, Will, did I tell you the news? What? Last week, there was a rumor on Reddit that Twilight Imperium 4 was on the boat. And today... <gasps> today hey, thanks, Will Mekoski. Today it came in stock on the Fantasy Flight game store for $150. Oh, nice. But I, I'm definitely going to buy a copy, but I'm going to wait a little bit because I don't think it's going to go out of stock immediately, so I'm going to see if some other retailers like Amazon pick it up for about $130, $125. Yeah, I am also going to purchase a copy as well. I want to paint the ships. Yeah, that's my desire as well. I've been doing this. Um, I got some weathering stuff, like Tamiya Weathering Master, where it's kind of like makeup consistency. And some... It's silver, bronze, and gold uh, metallic Sharpies. And then Ooh. I got... I got this small little kit. This small little Bandai kit that had an X-Wing and a Y-Wing in it, and I've only put the X-Wing together so far, but I was just practicing, like, weathering it and using the markers, and it looks really, really good. Nice. Um, the only problem is it doesn't have a whole lot of color on it because the color was coming from the stickers, but a lot of the stickers that came with the kit, like, I put them on the model, and they just look bulky. You know, they're not really good. Oh, they're not, like, yeah. thin, nice They're not stickers. the water ones? No, they're not the water ones. I, I need to figure out how to do the water ones. I've tried them once or twice, but they're hard. Oh, they're, um, they're pretty easy. I think I think I was just doing it wrong, but I could try again. But no, these were these were straight stickers, and they were also fat. So I like I put one or two on, and they worked okay. And then there were other ones that I tried to put on, and it didn't look good. So I mostly just used the weathering, the sharpies, and the Gundam markers, and I got a pretty good look on it. And then I was going to seal it with um, uh, a Mister Hobby uh, clear coat, like a matte clear coat. Mm -hmm. But uh, I bought it. It was delivered last Friday. I still haven't gotten it. <laughs> so Jeez. I'm going to like give it another day, and then I'm going to complain and probably try and get it, another bottle of it. But anyway, so I, I feel like I feel confident enough that I should be able to... I probably won't... I don't know that I'm going to repaint the ships in TI-4. TI mm. I think I'm just going to weather them and sharpen them. Because I was looking at getting an airbrush because I'm terrible at painting, and I feel like if I had an airbrush, I would actually learn it and be better at it. Guess how much, like, a decent starter airbrush kit is? Like, a, like, like a good one, not like a crappy one. Yeah, it's like 150, 200. Because you gotta buy the compressor and the airbrush. That's why I've never... That's why I stopped model making, pretty much. 
and moved yeah. to paper models in like Gundam. Yeah. Someday that's the thing. It. I think I'm probably never going to do this because I'm too lazy for it. But I really want to get towards the point where you you buy the sheets of the styrene yourself and you start to like custom stuff. I think I would really enjoy that. What do you mean? Like, have you seen um, uh, Adam Savage? He's done a couple one day builds. Oh, where, like, like the you, yeah. You okay. Buy the sheets of plastic. You cut it out. You build the rough shape, and then you put the gravely on top and all yeah. that. And then you do the airbrush to give it. That's where I first got into uh, the the paper houses. Is when yeah. that podcast first started. I started listening to it, and they were talking about it. Adam Savage has the Spirited Away bathhouse, which is three hundred dollars, and I've always wanted it. I don't know if he's oh. ever finished it. How big is it? It's like this big. Are you you're not looking at the screen? But wow, that's tiny. It's like a foot and a half. Oh. And it's just got a lot of detail in it, I'm guessing. It's one one fiftieth scale. Yeah, look it up on uh, go to Hobby Link Japan and search Tenkai Bathhouse. Hobby Link Japan. Uh, did you say Totoro Bathhouse? Spirited no, away. Spirited away. Spirited away. They sell they sell uh, 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 like a mat now that you can put all the different houses on for the Spirited oh. Away series. This, this model, like, it looks good from three. I'm looking at a different model. It's one one fiftieth of the entire castle. I'm spirited away. It's $450. That's the bathhouse, yeah. Oh, oh, that's what you meant. I thought it was, like, an interior scene. No, no, it, no, no. I think it just, it doesn't, there's some of the sides that don't look good. Oh, I love it. That's a little bland. I like the, like the front stuff. And the other side is great, but... They have like the, the the half of the size of it is like the base, which is just like a straight brick color. Yeah. I just I don't think I could do the paper stuff. I don't trust myself with it. Yeah, it's really hard, especially for someone who has really shaky hands. But I've built like tiny little bicycles and they're really fun. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I chose them initially, but I'm building a small Japanese town, so yeah, I'll stop. I up. I was thinking about getting into um like like more Western stuff, you know, like like jets and stuff. Mm. But the problem is a lot of it is is Western manufacturers like Revel and stuff like that, and they all of theirs is unpainted. Like you have to paint it yourself. Yeah, a and glue it. Gluing, I'm fine with. But that's the great thing about Gundam is that you don't have to do a lot to it because it comes in the right colors. Oh, I, Alexander sent me a picture of his buggy to send to you. I could show it to oh, the camera. Yeah. Do it. But now that I'm on Hobby Link Japan, uh, they have some models in here that are. Ian, look at the camera. I can't see the camera. I mean, go to Twitch. Send it, send it to me on t t Discord. Oh, it's on my phone. Okay, all right. Let me. Well, it's gone. Oh yeah, now. that's a honker. That's a honker. Oh my goodness! Wait, now that I'm looking at it, they have an F-14 Tomcat that's in pre-molded colors or pre-colored molds. Yeah. Oh no. This is. They have an SR-71 Blackbird coming out next week. Oh. I got the. Uh, I got an Apollo Saturn V model kit <clears throat> for Christmas, but again. I like, I have to paint it. Oh, yeah. I have the Lego one. The Lego one's really good. I've seen a couple of those Lego display things. Yeah, that's that's too much. That takes up too much space. Oh. Uh, I would totally... If I had, like, an office, I would do that. I hope I'm if entering or correctly. If I had an office... Okay, I think I found a company that does... Macross Fortress Warship... What is that? What is this anime? I'm looking at some anime that is an F-15 mech. Oh, yeah. I love that stuff. I forget what it's... I've looked it up. Uh, as someone who doesn't watch any anime, I didn't watch it. But, yeah, that stuff looks dope. This is from SDF-1 Macross Movie Edition. 
SDF dash on. I still want to get. I want to buy more of the Star Blazer stuff. Super Dimension Fortress. Now that I have so much free time, I should uh, watch more Star Blazers. I got. I still got to finish. I'm on the third season, third series of Gundam. I've been catching uh, up with a ton of Giant Bomb stuff. <laughs> Zach. Yeah, we're not playing another hour of this. I got the Witcher season finale to watch. Uh, how are you liking the show? Another I love in. it. I really love it. Yeah, it's definitely got its quirks, but I love the quirks. You know what I'm starting to fall off of? I've got two episodes left of... Oh, Expanse? Expanse season four. It's kind of, It got to this point where it was like... It felt like the only way they were able to ramp up the tension was to just start introducing just a whole bunch of like, oh, this is going wrong now. Oh, this is going wrong now. Oh, this is going wrong now. And then spending three episodes like trying to resolve these issues that I'm like seeing as, yeah, these, I mean, these are issues technically, but I can tell you just introduce them solely to introduce tension, you know? Yeah. Like they're not tied to the center plot. It's like thing A goes wrong because of, things that have happened in the plot. I accept that. But now we're going to say B, C, and D are going wrong as well. It's like, Thank you okay, this is stupid. I found a Volkswagen Type 2 delivery van Egg Girls Steampunk. Wow, this is a lot of good stuff. We should do a model stream. I've officially started editing my next Dwarf Fortress video. Oh, that's not good. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Space Pirate Battleship, isn't that from yours? Uh, is it? Yeah. Arcadia? It's Yamato, right? No, well. Well, Star Blazers? I think. Yeah, I think Space Pirate Battleship is. Let me look it up. It might be a different anime. I want to watch the live action Yamato. Yamato. Uh, yeah. I have. I remember it being okay. To Toki no wa. Is that what it's called? Toki no wa? Oh no, this is a different one. Reversing the ship in. Found a pink weird ship. Found some zero fighters. Those are pretty cool. We should do another model building stream. I've been thinking about that. Just buying some cheap models and putting them together. Next time you come up, we can go to Thunder Planet again. I tell you, I went to Connecticut uh, two weekends ago, I believe. Hey! Uh, and uh, the problem was uh gundam planet is closed on sundays and we drove past it after 6 p.m on fridays so they were closed Oof. so i couldn't go but uh i made up for it by just buying some gundam off you know of, what uh, Amazon. we're gonna stop there folks what what it's what? been a day of simulation it's been a night of simulation uh if you like this simulation pilot stream pilot uh let us know uh, i think it was fun there's so many simulator games i mean literally we could do an episode ian has the manual mm -hmm. we could fly the a10 warthog uh i gotta be honest with you i'm not really feeling this series i think it's a bit too low-key i don't i don't think we found enough jank okay ian's wrong so anyways uh this will be my stream series come on over to my channel better sub pixel on uh Oh, we should totally get that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Ian, thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. We're done. I'm going to switch. I'm going to turn this. Oh, this music's actually pretty good. I'm going to hit full webcam here. I'm going to come back to me. I'm going to say, hey, sweet, sweet boys and girls. Comment, like, subscribe. Go tell your friends. Go tell your family. We are so close to monetization. Um, within the next... Two days, Dang. I think. Because uh, we're at 38 something? Or 39 something. Yeah, I think we've already passed it. We're just waiting on YouTube to catch up. 
Yeah, and YouTube's a day behind, but for some reason it's not counting some stuff. Uh, which is kind of annoying, but, you know, the way the world works. So, anyways, almost got monetization, almost done with my Dwarf Fortress video. All sorts of lovely things happening. Our next uh, stream will be iRacing on Saturday. Is that what you're doing, Ian? Yeah, I think um, either Saturday or Sunday, probably Saturday, I'll do some iRacing. Not sure what time yet, so just keep an eye out. Uh, probably be okay. noon or later. And do some racing. I might stream this weekend. I also might. We were thinking of maybe doing some Mario Maker this weekend. Um, I would like to, whether Ian. Mm. You could do Mario Maker tomorrow. I could do my. I was gonna do Dwarf Fortress. I was gonna. Sorry, I was gonna edit Dwarf Fortress tomorrow. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, um, if we do, if I do I racing on Saturday, are you gonna join? Yeah, just uh, message me to make sure I remember. But I'll be okay. home all day. I don't think we're. Yeah, that works. Anything. It's supposed to snow, so probably just. Yeah, you guys worse. are gonna get it worse than us now. I think we're only gonna get like two inches, and then maybe a little bit of ice. Yeah, we're supposed to get eighteen feet here, so it's gonna be. Rough. Wow. Wow. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching. Good night. Bye.